Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin Wassalatu wassalamu ala Ashrafil anbiya wal mursalin Sidina wa habibina wa syafi'ina Wa nuri ya qulubina Wa qurati ya ainina muhammadin Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi Fi kud ahdin abada Ada ni'amillahi Wa afdalihi Allahumma atina min ladunka rahmah Wa alimna min ladunka ilma Subhanaka la alma lana إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لو أن تعلم وتعليم وتذكر وتذكر ونفع والانتفاع والفادة والاستفادة والحث على التمسك بكتاب الله وسنة رسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم ودعاء إلى الخدا ودلالة على الخير ابتغاء وجه الله ومرضاته وقربه وثوابه سبحانه وتعالى مع لطف وعافية برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إنا نسرك العلم لدني مشب سافي الهاني يا وهاب يا غني اللهم إنا نسألك العلم لدني مشب سافي الهاني يا وهاب يا غني اللهم إنا نسألك العلم لدني مشرب صافي الهاني يا وهاب يا غني اللهم صلي وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم ألهمنا علما فقه به أوامرك ونواهيك ورزقنا فهما نعرف به كيف نناجيك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إنا نسألك فهم النبي وحفظ المرسلين وإلهام الملائكة المقربين بعافية يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أغننا بالعلم وزينا بالحلم وأكرمنا بالتقوى وجملنا بالعافية يا أرحم الراحمين آمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم إنا نستودعك ما قرأناه وما نقرأه في هذا المجلس وما قبله وما بعده فاحفظه علينا حتى ترده إلينا وقت إحتياجنا إليه رحم الراحم اللهم أكرمنا بنور الفهم وأخرجنا من ظلمات الوهم وافتح لنا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا حكمتك يا رحم الراحم آمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم يا من مقاليد الأمور كلها, كلها بيده وإليه يرجع العمر كله يا فتاح يا عالم يا فتاح يا عالم يا فتاح يا عالم افتح علينا فتحا قريبا وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي وسدد لساني وهدي قلبي وفعل كذلك بأحبابي أبدا وارزقنا كمال فتوح العارفين والفقه في الدين ما كما الإخاص السلق واليقين والعافية والغنى ونصر والحفظ ونفع والانتفاع وخيرات الدارين وعلوم الأولين والآخرين آمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم الحمد لله رب العالمين الفاتحة الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We are continuing with our uh, book, The Beginning of Guidance. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In kitab, Bidatul Hidayah, uh, The Beginning of Guidance, uh, Lil Imam uh, Abu Hamid, Muhammad bin Muhammad bin Muhammad bin Ahmad, uh, Al Ghazali, Tusa Tabarani, Nafa'ana Allahu bihi, Wa bi'alumihi fid darain. Then, Qal, okay, from the book, The Beginning of Guidance by the Good Scholar, Um, the father of Hamid Muhammad bin Muhammad bin Muhammad bin Ahmad Al-Ghazali 
the way he may Allah benefit us by him and by his knowledge he doesn't both oppose till where he has said so we are now at the method and etiquette of ritual prayer we have reached this and we've, we've actually gone quite a bit um, into it a little bit actually <laughs> and we've only gone actually only, only a little bit into it um, we're going to continue from here Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So he says here, the method and etiquette of ritual prayer. When you have finished purifying yourself and purifying your body, clothes and surrounding of any impurities, after you have covered your nakedness from your navel to your knees, for men and for women is the entire body except the face and the um and the hands. And the hands meaning from the wrists from the wrist to the end of your fingers here. And right? from the wrist to the ends of your of fingers. Um Face the Qibla, standing with your feet apart, not touching each other. Stand, stand up straight and recite Surah Nas, seeking protection with it from the Shaitan, the curse that is before you pray, to seek, to seek a protection from the Shaitan. Make your heart present and empty yourself of all other thoughts, inshallah. Because you are about to stand, stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Consider before whom you are standing and upon whom you are calling. You should be ashamed to enter into intimate discourse with your master with a heart that is heedless and a breast full of thoughts of this world and draws off low, lowly desires. Know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is observing your inner self and beholding your heart subhanahu wa ta'ala. The heart is mahalun nadhar uh, al-ilah. Uh, the, heart is the, the heart is the place whereby Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at. Uh, so standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, bring yourself to presence and let yourself understand uh, that you are facing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, clean out your heart. There's nothing in this dunya that we need to be concerned with in our prayer. Really, there's nothing, nothing at all in this dunya that we need to be concerned with while we are standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in fact, while we are sitting in while we are sitting in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all concerns in the dunya become uh the pilling correct comparison and they, they, they become they become insignificant in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we also understand that we are standing in front of the one who is the solution for everything that we are facing in this world. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So why so why is there a distraction? Why are we looking to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Truly, Allah accepts your prayer based only on what, on the degree of your awe, humility, surrender, and submissive entry, and uh, entreaty of one, and submissive entreaty. Uh, it's, it's in the hadith where Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that um, a person only gets of his, uh, is only accepted of the of the prayer of a person what he is aware of, right? So only what you're aware of is accepted right, of the prayer. So so think to yourself and ask yourself. How much of your prayer are you actually present right, in uh, in as you as you pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and keep trying and try and try and try and try and try again. I don't don't take the path of shaitan, the path of despair. That just because you know you think that your prayer, the quality of your prayer is is lousy and, and you you will always think that. Then you will you will always you will always think that. And you will never for a moment in your life um Think that your prayer is worth anything. I, I mean, you. I mean, anything you know on your part, but of course, worth in that it is attached to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. But you'll never, for for a moment in your life, think I, that you know, be proud of your prayer. <laughs> if someone actually reaches that, that level of being proud of their prayer, then they have gone into a more dangerous situation than, than being heedless of their prayer. They have become arrogant. And they have become proud right, of their worship, whereas Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees all the flaws in our worship, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts it right, anyway. Right, so inshallah, we, we hope that He accepts it subhanahu wa ta'ala, but to come to the prayer uh, humbled uh, in humility and to always understand that you're never going to reach any form of, and you should never, you should never actually see any form of perfection in your worship uh, and even any form of um, <laughs> uh, uh, purity <laughs> in your worship you should never see it right? the moment you see it it's already a sign that you are um, you're deluded you are deluded right? someone who is someone who is uh, true to themselves they will never right? they will never ever ever see anything worth right, in themselves nor anything worth in whatever they do Mashallah, right, so Mashallah is you know it's it's so it's so counter, it's so it really counters what people speak about today, right, whereby whereby people keep um sanctifying themselves, people are unable, uh, to self blame, 
they're unable to take blame, they're unable to self-blame, right? they're unable to take it, right? that they are not, <laughs> they're not all that. <laughs> right? But the fact of the matter is, we're all not all that, <laughs> all of us. Right? We, we, we hardly, we hardly you know, um, present to Allah anything. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it's only by the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the, and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right, that He accepts from us. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Know that Allah Most High is observing your inner self and beholding your heart. Truly, Allah accepts your prayer based on what? On, on the degree of, of your awe, humility, surrender, and submissive entity. Right, so basically, focus on this. Right? Be in awe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Humble yourself, surrender yourself, surrender all your matters to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't bring these things into your prayer. And don't bring all these whispers, all these conversations, you know, all these issues into your prayer. You're praying. And you're facing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Worship Him in your prayer as if you see Him. And knowing that even though you do not see Him, He sees you for definitely. If your heart does not come to presence, it is due. Allahumma salli wa sallam. If your heart does not come to presence, it is due to a shortcoming or in your understanding of the magnificence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala most high. Now it is basically not you know not understanding that you are right there in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And something just occurred to me about about just like like an example of this in, in our zaman right now, in our time. You know, um it just occurred to me, you know, like how you know how much you realize you're in front of a person. Right, how much you realize you're in front of a, of a person that that would that would automatically reflect on how um on how you behave right in front of that individual so like right now in our in our in our modern day just just hold just hold an analogy you know an analogy right, in our modern day um situation of zoom right and how many times we have these you know uh, when i when, when i when i teach these children for children mashallah you know, sometimes they're so innocent, they didn't realize they're actually right in front of me <laughs> and I'm teaching them. Um, for adults, sometimes, sometimes people don't realize that the camera's on. Right? And when they don't realize the camera's on, they're being watched or they can be seen. Right? They will behave in all kinds of ways because they don't, they don't, have, the, they don't have the yaqeen, they're being seen. Right, you see that there's, there's an analogy there's, uh, uh, to bring our understanding closer to this, to this, to this, to the statement of Imam Ghazali. It is due to the shortcoming of your understanding, right, of Allah's magnificence. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala sees you to the level of as to which you 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 realize that Allah sees you. That is how you will behave, right? It is to the level of which you realize Allah sees you. Right, so like just to bring the, the, the example of other human beings. If you're on Zoom, like if you don't realize that your your camera is on. Right, or if, okay, let's say if you're very sure the camera's off, right? If someone's very sure the camera's off, right? They won't even you know be bothered, right? Um, uh, to dress properly <laughs> in their homes, right? They might not even be bothered, you know, uh, how they're seated, right? They, be, they might be lying down, they might be doing all kinds of things. I'm right? not bothered, right? Because why? Um, they they're having full conviction the camera's off, <laughs> right? But once you know they know the camera's on and and, and people are seeing them. Right, straight away they change their behavior right, because you know they're being watched correct you know they're being watched but to the level as to how much you know you're being watched and what of you is being watched right, to the level of how much you know you're being watched and what of you is being watched right that's how your behavior will be right so it is really it is really our our distraction in our solat you know our lack of focus in our prayer it is a direct relation to our understanding of Allah's watching of us direct relation right, to our understanding of Allah's watching of us and what Allah actually sees of us which is which is what is in our hearts and Allah does not look at your outward appearance but rather he looks into your heart subhanahu wa ta'ala right, so 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 if, if somebody has full understanding that Allah sees right into their heart if they have complete deep understanding, then they will not be able to, in any way, um, uh, have something else in there, right? Um, that that Allah can see and Allah can know that you are not focused on Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Like for example, you know, like like if I mean this is an example, eh? Like if someone is in in class and then they are in you know um you know, talking about my teenagers, young ones. You all, inshallah, you all all focused like on the class, right? But I know like like when I when I teach younger ones, if let's say eh, let's say eh, I'm able to open up anybody's um browser right now, 
if let's say Zoom uh, gives up a uh, uh, this would be horror. Eh? <laughs> like if Zoom has a in a uh, uh, in an option whereby the host is able to screen share anybody's screen right now, right? Let's say, eh, let's say this is what was possible to do on Zoom, uh, which completely complete invasion of privacy, <laughs> right? But if let's say, right, this was 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 um possible straight away, right? How many people will be closing all their browsers? Uh, you know, across <laughs> like straight away, right? Because because that you know you have your queen that um that someone can look into the your private space, right? Uh, someone can look into. Of course, you know like when you when you, sc- you share screen and, you, and then you don't realize you're sharing the screen, and then your WhatsApp everything is being shown, and you're horrified, correct? All the personal messages all appear, and the whole world on the Zoom can see. Right, this is exactly our heart. You know, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. He said, "How many windows?" You know, we have we have a modern day um, analogy for us to really understand what's going on with our heart. We have so many windows open <laughs> in our heart. You come to the salat, and so many uh, browsers open <laughs> in the heart. You know, your work, your cooking, your family, your 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 your, your spouse, your friends, your this, your that, and so even even sometimes we have windows open about celebrities. We have windows open about about um, uh, drama series. We have windows open about it's all in our heart. So many windows open and they come to the solid right uh, and Allah sees every window <laughs> that's open in your heart you know um, and they're not focused not focused close all the browsers <laughs> in your heart you're gonna like use the modern day analog- energy eh? <laughs> close all the browsers no no there's no point why are you watching stuff and you're praying and of course in the physical on the physical a- a- aspect like who in the world would pray with tv on in front of them you know, that is on the act, that was to be on an outward, you know, a situation. When I said this to the, to the children, they'd be like, Yeah, sometimes I want to watch something, I want the TV, then I push it down, even on the TV, then I pray. <laughs> and then watching the TV while, while praying. Eh? <laughs> and then, but we adults will not know different. Our TV is, op- is on in our, in, our, in, our, in our hearts. And we're watching stuff in our hearts to keep our stuff in our hearts. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees our screen. Eh? Allah sees everything on the screen. <laughs> you know, subhanAllah. So it's really, it's really due to your own gnosis of the magnificence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your own realization of how Allah sees you. Therefore, imagine that a pious man from among the respected people of the community is watching you to see how your prayer is. Okay, so of course, in the outward, you can still fake it. And on the outward, you can still think, let's like, zoom, nah, sorry, nah. Like, if I look at everybody on outward right now, I see everyone's focused, you know, but, but, and I, and I, but I have, teach, I have taught, you know, children, a, a younger ones, not, not, not so young, usually, the, the younger ones, the preschoolers, they are easy, they all don't know how to open anything, and, um, <laughs> the easiest people to teach, <laughs> um, the, the, the primary schoolers, teenagers, oh, they can be looking right into the, into the, into the camera, and look at they're very focused on the class, but they're watching YouTube. Right? They, they can be looking right in. I can and I can actually you no know, interesting thing that I didn't, didn't realize. I can actually see the reflection in their in their glasses. I can, <laughs> but I don't call them out. I can actually see, you know, I can actually see and people now you're like, now everybody's so self conscious. Like, she can see my reflection <laughs> in my glasses. <laughs> right? I can actually see it in their glasses. Um the, the the I can at least at least I can see is your browser changes. Uh, you're not supposed to be changing your browser, <laughs> right? But I can see that it changes, and I can even see in the, the glow in their faces. I'm not nur, it's not nur, <laughs> right? But it's the um, the YouTube changing, right, in their faces, right? So unless I don't want to, I don't want to call them out on it. I, I see it lah, but then I but, but I will just say, you know, your parents allow you to come for class. It is a trust from your parents, an amana. It is a, you know, I don't don't betray them in doing what you're doing. Right? Allah can see what you do, so I will just say this kind of stuff lah. But I can see in their faces. <laughs> right, so um, so mashallah, if let's say a righteous person was there, right, uh, watching you pray, right, and 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 human beings they can't actually see into your hearts. Some of them can, of the Aulia. They can see right in your hearts. There's a story I can remember of Fish Wali. He was, um, uh, uh, they asked him, you know, why don't you pray behind this Imam in the Masjid? And the Wali said, because, you know, I don't want to. And then um, the Imam was like, yeah, why don't you pray behind me in the Masjid? And the Wali was like, I just don't want to. And the Imam was like, Pray, pray behind me in the masjid. So don't judge me in that way. Pray behind me in the masjid. I am the imam over the over this community. So stand behind me and pray behind me in the masjid. So the wali said, "Okay, fine. I will come to the masjid. Okay, 
Hey, but we'll, I'll, I will, I will see if I will pray behind you in the masjid. So it's, it's what it's, they call majdu. Right? So majdu, uh, majdu, uh, awliya, they have like, um, they have unveilings lah, and and they, and they and they behave in, they behave in what people might call strange, right? Strange ways. So basically, the imam began to pray, right? And then the wali, you know, at the, uh, he didn't pray. He was sitting, at the, he was sitting down on the side, the side of the masjid. Right, and then he was like, so while the man, while the imam was reading Surah Fatiha, right, um, the the wali, right, he was like, all of a sudden, right, he began to bray like a like 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 a, like a donkey, like to bray like a donkey, like he howled loud don donkey sounds, right, in the masjid, and after a while he began to um. What's the word in English? Bear like a coming, like like a goat. What's what's it called in, in English? Bear like bear. There's a there's a word in English for that. But anyway, there's a um uh he began he began to he began to bear like a like like, like a goat. I'm sure, there's a word for it. Eh? I forgot the word. Um, <laughs> forgot what 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 do you say in English? Bleat. Yeah, you are bleat. Right, he began to bleat like a like a like a goat. I forgot all these words. Um, and then after a while, he began to, is that a moo? Moo it? <laughs> he began to moo like a cow. I know that the Arabic story, but I'm wondering what's the English words. Um, so he began to moo like a cow, moo like a cow, you know, and, and, and so on. Like, so this, 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 so, so in the whole time, the Imam tengah ring ring Fatiha, eh, and this while he was making animal sounds at the back of the masjid, and then you know, it, uh, after the prayer, right, the people came up to him and said to him, "What's wrong with you?" <laughs> You were praying and you were bleating and you were and 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 you and you were praying and you were mooing, you know. By the end, at, at the side of the masjid, and then the wali looked at the, at the imam and said, "Imam, you tell them why I was doing all that." And the imam very very um, and very, very ashamedly said, "Because when I was when 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 when, when I was praying and I began alhamd when I began the fatiha Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, I began to think about my donkey." <laughs> <laughs> the missionary even think about his donkey at home. What? What my donkey? Did I? Did I, did I, did I tie up my donkey? You know, even the thing about his donkey. And then so the the wali kasha first got like see into his into his heart. The wali began to bray like a donkey. So he must have caught himself. You know, thinking about his donkey. So he stopped thinking about his donkey. Then as he as he read Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin. Then he began thinking about his goats. <laughs> he went into his goats. Then the wali began to to bleed like all his goats. <laughs> and then the imam the ranjat. Then he got he got shocked. And then he stopped himself. <laughs> and then he and then he went a raham. Every ayat the the mind went to one animal. <laughs> and a rahman a rahim. And then he went to think about his cows. Right, he thinking, let's drink the milk of my cow. Today I know I saw so much milk in the others. He was thinking thinking about himself about the, about the cows. <laughs> and then so the wali began to move. <laughs> <laughs> like the cow, just basically, the one he was, you know, showing that this imam is not focusing his prayer at all. Um, throughout the prayer, uh, the imam were were mooping his animals <laughs> in his in his head, you know, mashallah. Um, and the imam was just embarrassed, like, and he was like, yeah, I actually think of all. I I, I whenever I pray on it, I begin to think of all my animals. <laughs> Every single prayer, he does that. La hawla wa la quwwata. You know, the stories have I, you know, the audio stories, mashallah. Um, uh, so so anyway. Uh, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Yeah, so it's just, it's just, you know, so, 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 so that's you imagine a righteous person in front of you. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if he's right there in front of you, you can see your face, they're completely distracted. You know, subhanAllah. Um, it's another story about a man. There are many stories, like, you know, of these people who don't focus in their prayer. Um, there was a story about a man, um, where the, where, where, um, the, the imam had prayed three rakats, you know, and the whole jama'ah was not, uh, was not aware. <laughs> <laughs> that the imam actually preached three rakats. Everybody pun tengah blur. Everybody is not, 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 not focused. Everybody is following the imam only. So the imam, he prayed the three rakats. But there was one person in the jama'ah where she got up for the fourth rakat. Confidently got up for the fourth rakat. So for the entire prayer, the all ten team was like, you one person in the jama'ah who was, you know, who got up for an extra rakat. How how sure are you that, that, that you know, that you, the imam only did three rakats? The man was like, I'm very sure, I'm very sure, I'm very sure. The imam only did three rakats and do a fourth rakat. And everybody was like, no, we are quite sure the imam did, the, the imam did uh, four rakats. The imam himself had no, had no idea that he did three. He also thought he did four. Everybody thought he did four, right? And then this guy was like, no, very sure. I'm very sure he did three and not four. He said, how come you're so sure? Then the guy said, well, when the imam begins to uh, pray, 
I begin to count my stock in my shop. <laughs> and I have a few shops <laughs> in the marketplace. By the time the imam finished praying, I finished counting my stocks. <laughs> so, so today, when the imam finished praying, I was only on my third shop. <laughs> I had not gone to my fourth shop. So, it's, it's actually a bad story. Yeah, but it's, <laughs> it was like, so I know for sure this imam haven't do four cards. <laughs> Because usually I finish counting my stocks <laughs> before the imam finish spraying. Not focused in their soul. Like, right? Um, it is really, it's really a matter eh, of, of being focused uh, in making the righteous persons in front of you. Um, amongst the righteous people of your community is watching you to see how your prayer is. And imagine, okay, imagine that there's a loudspeaker in your heart. Imagine eh? Can you imagine eh? <laughs> like, hawla, wala, kwata, illa, billa. Like, imagine there's a mic, can connect a mic to your heart, and then loudspeaker out whatever is being whispered in your heart. Horrified. Eh? Everybody be horrified. Right? <laughs> if Allah opens up everything that's in our hearts. Wala, hawla, wala, kwata, illa, billa. At this, your heart will become present and your limbs peaceful. Right? One, of the, one of the righteous was asked, how do you, how do you attain such... Um, uh, focus in your prayer and he said well when I come into prayer I imagine uh, of course Allah is watching me in front of me right and then I also imagine the Prophet Sallallahu Wasallam is leading me in the prayer and then I imagine behind me is the angel of death and I imagine on my right is paradise and on my left is the hellfire and I imagine I am standing on the sirat and the one who prays in that way, how can he not focus like, in his prayer? Right? Just, 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 just imagine the angel of death is on your, is at your neck, really. You, you know, <laughs> you should be focused. Like right? this is your very last prayer. Right? You will be focused. Um, then ask yourself: Are you not embarrassed in front of your Creator and your Master? Right? Aren't you embarrassed that you're being distracted? When you imagine being observed, being observed by one of His humble slaves who has no means to benefit or harm you, your limbs become submissive and your prayer becomes improved. You know, if someone writes there was right in front of you, suddenly you pray with so much khushu, you know, so much focus, you take your time praying, you pray more sunnahs than you usually do, you know, mashallah, you can even weep in your prayer, mashallah, you know, and then when you pray by yourself, so fast, la hawla wa la quwata illa billah, super fast, not even sitting down after prayer to do zikir. I so my mother, my mother calls this the three salams. <laughs> the three salams people. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. They go off. Orang tiga salam. The three salam people. Salam, salam, salam. <laughs> they jump in. They run away. La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. It's, 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 it's so common. It's not supposed to be funny. It's a, it's a, it's a terrible thing, nah. Terrible thing that we have people in a society that, um, or amongst us, when our own selves, but we just, you know, give salams when you run away, as if you're a five year old, you know, <laughs> running off to your, to your, to your play. Alhamdulillah. Um, nah. Okay. Yet, yeah, so, yeah, so, so is it? Aren't you, aren't you embarrassed, right? That, that if let's say a human being was there, you take the prayer seriously, but if just you and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, you couldn't care less. Yet you know that Allah is observing you and you don't humble yourself before His Majesty. Is He most high, is He most high lower to you than one of His slaves? How great is your tyranny, how severe your ignorance, and how great you wrong yourselves. Right? Subhanallah. You know, it's just it's just us you just have to reflect on your soul. Like, straight away you know how you know where you, you, you know how pathetic <laughs> you are. I mean, anyone who thinks anything, you know, to be proud of, of themselves, just reflect on your solat. Just one thing. Just one thing in your life, reflect. Your solat only. Just your solat. That's all. And once you reflect on your solat, there's nothing to be proud of. Really. There's nothing. The most, the most uh, basic thing in your religion. Right? The most foundational thing in your religion. The first thing you're taught. Up till now, how many years down the road. Right? Still, right, the, 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 the quality eh? treat your heart with these remedies in the hope that it will be present 
uh, with you in your prayer. For verily, nothing of your prayer counts except that which you are mindful. I mentioned the hadith. Eh? Nothing of your prayer counts except which you are mindful. It's from the hadith. As for the part where that you, you performed with heedlessness, in it, uh, it is more in need of repentance and expiation. Which is why after your prayer, the first thing you do is astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Right? Before all the shortcomings in your prayer. Once your heart is present, do not omit the call to comments. Right? Even if you're lo- you are alone, if you are waiting for a group of worshippers to be present, make the call to prayer, then the call to comments. Call to comments meaning uh, the iqama. <coughs> right? The iqama. Um, you know, mashallah, uh, there's stories of, 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 of people, mashallah, in, in Hadramut, it's all the Hadramut stories, um, of people who, Allahumma salli ala sallina Muhammad, now, uh, 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 stories of people who, who before they pray, they will see the Kaaba in front of them, and they wait, and they will see the Kaaba, you know, in front of them, and then they take the takbiratul ihram, and they begin to pray, right, but the, but the ulama, the scholars say, the scholars of fiqh, right, they say that if these people, actually understood the greatness of getting takbiratul ihram right after the imam right they would understand that getting takbiratul ihram right after imam is more virtuous than seeing the kaaba in front of you before you pray it's more virtuous right because the prophet sallallahu spoke about getting the takbiratul ihram with the imam what does it mean by getting takbiratul ihram with the imam it means that when the imam is ready to pray you are ready already at the raw of the Allah Akbar, you say the ah of the Allah. Okay, so it means the Imam has finished saying Allah Akbar. He says the raw of Allah Akbar. You begin straight away Allah Akbar. That means you have gotten the takbir ihram of the Imam. Okay, that means you have gotten the takbir ihram of the Imam. Uh, if you are later than that, then you look, then you, then you miss the takbir ihram of the Imam. Uh, so basically, when the Imam is standing, you are standing already. Uh, the Imam uh, does, does takbir, he do takbir right. It's, it's in Arabic, it's called Aqibat to Takbir to Imam. Uh, imam. I mean, in Arabic, it says, you know, it's right at the heels of the Imam's takbir. You're on the heels of the Imam's takbir. And uh, the Imam just finishes takbir and you begin your takbir. And uh, that one is, that is, um, the head, that one, if you do it every day or you do it for 40 days in a row, that you will feel this is sweetness of prayer that you'll never need, that you, you, you can't taste anywhere else. You know, subhanAllah. One of the most virtuous things to do, right? To get the takbiratul ihram of the Imam. And in fact, when we were studying in the Zahra, what they will say it is unbecoming of the student of knowledge to not, especially for the men, eh, for the men. Right, because men have no excuse. Right, women, maybe because of your of your family situation, your children, right? Uh, you you have an excuse. Right, but for men, they have no excuse. Right, Habib people always say there is no, it is unbecoming of the student of knowledge to not get the takbir ihram of the imam in the masjid. Right, unbecoming right, of the student of knowledge. Right, not serious about about seeking secret knowledge. Not serious. What? You no, know, much less about those who pray late. You know, much less about those who pray later on. No, no excuse. Right, so if you are a true student of knowledge, you will be there at the masjid before the prayer time. Right? And then you will get the takbir ihram of the imam um, uh, every single day. This is the, 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 the adab and the etiquette of the student of knowledge. Right, so anyway, there was a... Uh, so they do, they, do, they, do, they do comment on this, you know, mashallah. They do comment on it because there are people who will, who will delay the takbir ihram because they are waiting for the Kaaba to appear in front of, of themselves uh, before they pray. And then, and, and, then, and then the scholars will say to them that it's not righteous. That is not more righteous than to do the takbir ihram with the imam. That is more righteous. You think seeing the Kaaba is more righteous? No. Right, but the takbir ihram with the imam is more righteous than seeing the Kaaba before you take before you uh, pray. Um, right, so once your heart is present, do not omit the call to, to commence meaning the the the, the, the iqama. If you're waiting for group of worshippers for men to do the azan and then the iqama. Once you've done the iqama, iqama is sunnah muakkada. Right, so iqama is um, is an emphasized sunnah. Right, so whether you're praying alone or you're praying in a group, I always do the iqama, emphasized sunnah. Um, once you have made a call to comments from from the intention in your heart to perform the obligatory rakats of dhuhr for Allah Most High, this intention should be, pre- should be present in your heart as you make the opening takbir and should not leave your heart before you finish the takbir. Right, so here he, he, he points out some uh, fiqh points. Right, to say the niyat before the prayer is sunnah, to say the niyat in your heart while you are uttering the takbir is wajib. 
I so this is something that many people are negligent of, right, or they don't learn properly, right? That when you do the takbir of the prayer, um, while your tongue is busy with the takbir, your heart needs to be busy with the niyat, with the intention, all right? Um, the intention that you that you recite before the prayer itself is sunnah, right? It's sunnah. So when you say. Usalli farud al-zuhri arba'a raka'at ada'an O is it ma'amuman O imaman Mustaqbal al-qiblah lillahi ta'ala So if you say that in the beginning of the If you say in Arabic, say in Malay, say in English Doesn't matter right? There is no um, There is no um, like Extra points Saying in Arabic It's just easier uh, to me lah, okay, to me it's easier saying in Arabic, but there's no extra points. Uh, it's just it's sunnah. You say in MLA, it's in English, doesn't matter. The niyat doesn't matter. There is no. You will not find any fake books whereby you will say say in Arabic is um more rewarded. Like, I just you just said, I just find saying in Arabic is just easier. I, I stumble over the words I'm saying in English <laughs> that I have never ever done it. Right, but then I think it's just very. I don't like just very difficult to pronounce. Um. Allah alam, up to you. Whatever, whatever, whatever you, whatever you're comfortable with. But whatever you say before the prayer, in whatever language it may be, is sunnah. Then, as you say, Allah akbar. Right. So while your tongue is 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 occupied with the takbir, your heart must be occupied with the niyat. So your heart is speaking. Your heart is saying, now what? Usalli farud al zuhri. At minimum, these three words. Usalli farud al zuhri. Minimum. Those three words must enter in your takbir, eh? Minimum. Three words. Usalli, farba, zuhri. Minimum. Alright? Uh, that is wajib. These three words are wajib. Uh, beyond that, also nah. So beyond that, even if you, even if, if beyond that, you know, you say it while you enter the prayer. That right? means you already begin your fatiha, your dua, if you and you're doing all the, the, the extra parts, the, 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 the sunnah parts. It's okay. Perfectly fine. No problem. Right, so as long as you have usalli for zuhri during your Allahu Akbar, okay, um, arba'a raka'atin, uh, ada'an, uh, imaman, or ma'muman, mustaqbil al-qiblah, lillahi ta'ala, and all of this will happen, uh, uh, if, even if, whether it's in the takbir or the takbir, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, okay, um, na'am. Uh, okay, so so uh, so your your so your, your intention right, should be in your heart while you're doing a takbir. After letting your hands hang loose by your sides, raise them to your shoulders when taking and singing the takbir with palms open, fingers spread out. Do not burden yourself with trying to keep the fingers together or separate. Raise them such that your thumb is on the level of your earlobe, your fingertips on the top parts of your ears, your palms parallel with your shoulders. Once they have settled in this position, say a takbir, then lower your hands gently. In raising your hands or lowering them, do not push them forward or backward, nor shake them from side to side. Why shake them from side to side? Okay. All right, so anyway, um, Sudna methods. Let me demonstrate. Nah. Okay. Alright. So, okay. So, um, so now before takbir, eh? Right, before takbir, you're gonna have your hands hang loose by your sides. Okay, hands and hands hang loose by your sides, and then um, you can sit in yet first, first softly, right? So hands by your side. Usalli farud al-zuhri arba'a raka'atin ada'an imaman mustaqil at ma'muman mustaqbil al-qibla lillahi ta'ala. Allah Okay um, Sorry my finger Let me, let me, let me remove my Virtual background <laughs> My hands are all long um, Okay now Okay uh, Allah Masih Nama Muhammad Okay so um, Oh So, so, so okay, my, list, my list are all going down lah. But basically If you are having Those kind of um, Telekong Right Those kind of prayer garment That has sleeves These are the best types Right, because with sleeves, it enables you to show your palm, to expose your palm. Right, so the exposure of the palm is uh, sunnah. To expose the palm is sunnah. Right, if you're wearing normal sleeves, uh, like what I'm doing right now, I'm wearing normal sleeves, I usually like to just um, clip it in my in my thumb. Or, yeah, this is the one. This one, I actually, do, 
I should made a hole in my sleeve. Right, to keep my my sleeves up. <laughs> I see I, I cut the I cut the sewing. Whatever lah. Eh? <laughs> but anyway, um but the zone is it's more of if I'm just um doing work and then there are men around I just only keep my sleeves up. But it's not good for prayer because it is it dangles, see? It dangles. Uh, so it's not sah, eh? it's not sah. If it dangles and you can see your you can just see my, my arm right through it. Okay? It's not sah, it's not valid. Right, so you need to tighten it. This is the best thing to do. Tighten it. Okay? Um, usually my teachers, they will put in a uh, rubber, getah. Right, they put in some, some um, elastic uh, into their sleeves and it, so it, will, it will catch around their, uh, around their, their, their wrist. Right, so, okay. So, so the sunnah is basically um, the, the 10 sunnahs with regards to lifting the hands. Eh? Uh, hands exposed. Right, if you hold, if you lift your hand naturally, <laughs> they will all fall. In, whatever Imam Ghazali just said here will fall into place. Okay, if you lift your hands naturally, whatever Imam Ghazali is, is describing here will fall into place. So if it's a natural lifting like this, right? So you see my 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 earlobe, it will be in line with my thumb. The top of my head, my fingers will be in line with the top of my ears. Right, the bottom of my wrist, so it's in line with my sh- my shoulder. It's exactly it is it, exactly unless you have extra extraordinary long hands, <laughs> which most people don't, or you have extra ordinary long neck, <laughs> which most people don't, <laughs> right? right? But if you if you do a natural lifting like this, it, it should all it should all be in line, right? Your the tip the top of your fingers with the top of your ears, the top of your thumb with the, with the, the lobe of your of your, your of your ears. The wrist with your shoulders. It's, it's a natural it's a natural alignment. Anyway, don't think so much about it. Uh, it's, a natu- it's a natural alignment. So as long as you don't go like high or you don't go low, right? You just go normal. It should be fine. Okay. Um, and then, uh, yeah. So, so what they're saying here, you know, of the, the three parts, it will be a natural alignment. It's a natural alignment, right? Um, also, so how do you hold your fingers? So you don't put your fingers together. You don't open your fingers far apart. Right, but they are slightly together like this. Your fingers from this from a side view, eh? From a side view, it's not straight up, it's not bent like that, right? But it is slightly curved. Basically, be natural, right? The natural position. So this is not, it's unnatural. This is unnatural. <laughs> this is unnatural. This is unnatural. Right? To be normal, lah. To be normal is <laughs> natural. Okay, um, nah, uh, Allah Muhammad Sallallahu Muhammad. Okay, so this is all basic. So basically, slightly apart, slightly bent, um, uh, uh, open, facing the kibla, facing the kibla, facing the kibla, um, around your ears, kind of level. So you know how you do like that? Yeah, around there lah. Okay, now how? Well, you say, you say, ah, okay. So you just, you just do it, do it like that. Okay, it's the same level. Like that, okay. So some people, what I've seen, people they they they, they do it this way, right? They sh- sh- chop, <laughs> then ch- chopping or anything, right? Uh, some people they do it like that, they they, they push like that, like a push up. Just don't do that. Um, some people they, they raise their hands, right? <laughs> surrender, eh? surrender. Um, don't do that all also. Nah, um, there's a sunnah in all these things, lah. In sunnah is just here. Okay. Uh, Allahumma salli ala salli. You raise your hands with the with the, with the ah of Allah. Allah Okay So with the A of Allah The right hand goes up Allahu Akbar Okay uh, The raw of the bar right, Is when you fold your hands right, Over each other Okay Sunnah Okay now I'm uh, Raising your hands over them Not push them They said don't put them forward Nor backward Nor shake them from side to side Why not? Do you shake them from side to side? Do not push them forward Or backward <laughs> right, no, I shake them <laughs> like playing or something. Um, Allahumma salli ala sayyidina Muhammad. Okay, just a rule of thumb. I think mentioned it in another fiqh class. Right, that um, before the aytidal, aytidal is after ruk, after ruku, eh? All positions before aytidal, your hands are slightly apart. Okay, so with your takbir slightly apart. Holding in front here, the, your, your fingers, your fingers, slightly apart, right? Ruko, grasping your knees, slightly apart. That means you're grasping, you're grasping your knees, slightly apart. 
Okay And then um, uh, Yang idal Sayyidina Allah Alhamdulillah Same thing also Start the year part After i'tidal The hands all now Come together Okay So after i'tidal The halfway mark Sujud You put your hands down Together So you don't open your, your hands But you put it down Together Sit down after sujud Together on your lap Don't grasp your knees Many people grasp their knees When they sit down after sujud Why? Yeah, don't grasp your knees I just, just put it on your, on your thighs It's sunnah for the tip of your finger To be in line with the cap of your knees It's sunnah eh, for the tip of your fingers To be in line with the cap of your knees right, So don't put it so back Towards your, your um, upper thigh <laughs> right? uh, Nor hold the knees right, um, After you sujud Okay? Rule of thumb lah, the rule of thumb that uh that that before the artidal is all slightly apart, after the artidal is all together. Okay, just very simple to understand to remember. Okay, um, naam. Alright, once you have let your hands go, raise them towards your chest, right, uh, on the right hand by placing it over the left, uh, and spread your fingers of your right hand along the the length of the left forearm. And hold to your left hand at the and hold to your left hand at the wrist. Okay, so basically there are three ways of doing this. Okay, so so what what it means by let I feel like your hands go, right? So it's it's not like you go Allah and you, and you put your hands down. No. You all so you go Allah Akbar and you fold. You fold it in front of you, eh? Okay, there are three ways of, of, of holding your hand. Right, so the first way is that you... Okay, so basically, you're going to have more of your right hand show in front of you than your left hand. I'm going to show you my hand here. Right, so basically, um, uh, you don't put it in the center, but you're going to bring it to the side a little bit. Not, not all the way, eh? So I'm going to put all the way. Right, just a little bit to the side. Maybe in line with your heart, wherever your heart is. Right, right so the truth of doing this, one way is that you actually grasp your your right hand grasps your left wrist. That means grasp all together. It's one way, sunnah. Another way is one finger along it. Right? And another way is um, two fingers along it. Okay? So the two fingers along it, one finger along it, or you grasp it all together. Right? But grasp. Okay? So right hand over the left hand, right towards the left of your body. Okay? Now. I spread out your fingers of your right hand long length of your, your forehead and hold on to your left hand at the wrist. So, so if you're trying to understand what is this means, is that not all the fingers, like one or two fingers. So the rest of the fingers is grasping right, onto the wrist. Okay? Alright. Um, after takbir, I was saying Allahu Akbar. And then start by doing the um, dua iftitah. Allahu Akbar kabira walhamdulillahi kathira wa subhanallahi bukrata wa asila wajjahtu wajhi alladhi fatra samawati wal ard hanifam muslima wa ma ana minal mushrikin inna salati wa nusuki wa ma hiyaya wa ma mati lillahi rabbil alamin la sharika lahu wa bithalika umirtu wa ana minal muslimin Okay, dua iftitah Dua iftitah is only sunnah if you had not said anything from the points of the takbir to the dua. So when you Allahu Akbar straight away, Allahu Akbar kabira walhamdulillahi kathira. Okay, so if you say Allahu Akbar and then you go into A'udhu Billahi Min Ash-Shaytanir Rajim, da, you have missed the sunnah. You cannot go back. You cannot backtrack, okay? Or you go Allahu Akbar, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. You have begun Fatiha. Uh, you have. You cannot go back to Awwaz Billah. You cannot go back to Allahu Akbar Kabira. Uh, so the moment you miss a Sunnah, you can't go back. Uh, you have missed the Sunnah. Uh, you, you have to continue from where you are at. Right, so, um, you know, mashallah, uh, reflect on the words. Inshallah, next week I will go into the dua iftitah and the ta'awuz and the fatiha and so on. Uh, he, will speak, he speaks about it and we will go into a bit of um, reflection on it. There is deeper reflection on this part uh, with regards to salatul muqarrabin, right, the, 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 the prayer of those who are close, of the ones who are close. Which inshallah, maybe in the future I can do a class on that. But then for now, <laughs> not yet, inshallah. Um, now nah, let me see the questions here. Yeah, a lot of questions. Okay. Um, first question. 
is it true that as long as you pray in jama'ah, your prayers are accepted anyway? Yes, that is true. That's from a hadith. Nabi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said when, when people send in jama'ah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at the heart of the imam. If the imam's prayer, if the imam is focused and his prayer is accepted, then the prayer of the entire jama'ah is accepted. However, if the imam is um, distracted, Allah looks at the heart of the person on the right of the imam. And if the person is, is focused, then Allah saves the entire prayer. If he's distracted, you know, to the, to the guy on the left of the imam, and so on. Until Allah looks into the heart of every person in the first saf to look for one heart that is focused on the prayer. Um, if none of the hearts are focused on the prayer, Allah looks to the second, to the next saf, and the following saf, and the following saf, looking for a single heart that is focused in the prayer. If none of them are focused on the prayer, then the entire jama'ah is not focused on the prayer, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts the jama'ah um, uh, uh, because Allah loves jama'ah. And it goes the hadith, eh? Because Allah loves jama'ah. Um, there that, that is a hadith. Naam. Um, Allahumma sallallahu alayhi wa sallam That does not mean that you don't care About focusing Okay It doesn't mean that you don't care about focusing It just, it just, means, it just, it just shows Allah's, Allah's mercy And Allah's love for jama'ah That's all it shows So it does not show that you just don't care About your uh, focus in the prayer As soon as I, oh I'm praying jama'ah So I'm going to So I'm going to think about all my goats And my, and my donkeys and my sheep <laughs> Goats, donkeys and sheep eh um, uh, uh, no, no. Is this, this is to show Allah's mercy and Allah's love for Jama'ah. Right? But it does not uh, give you like a ticket right, to not care. Right? So same thing, it's something like, 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 like you know, Allah's forgiveness for, for sins. It doesn't mean you go around committing sins. Right? Allah can forgive anything. Right? But you, you, you don't like, you know, okay, lah, Allah can forgive everything. But Shafa'ah or something, it's, it's okay, lah, I'm just going to just, you know, do all the sins and watch all and binge watch all the videos right Allah can forgive everything right no and on your part your duty on Allah's part his and Allah's part his mercy subhanahu wa ta'ala alayna al-harakah wa ala Allah al-barakah on you to work and Allah to bless subhanahu wa ta'ala what if in your prayer you are in a state of sadness or in trouble mind hands your mind and heart is thinking about the needs to comfort and help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As long as you focus on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you focus on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So if you're feeling sad and whatsoever, you, you focus on what? On Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are focused. You are focused eh? on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, it's not, it's not counted as being distracted. Okay. Um, right? It's not a hadith. Someone asked about a hadith. It's not a hadith. It's one of the, it's one of the righteous, you know, when he was asked, if I'm not wrong, Imam Malik. When he was asked how does he how come he focuses in every single prayer, then he said, you know, whenever he whenever he prays, he imagines Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in front of him, watching him. Um the Rasam is his Imam. Then on his right is the uh, the angel, eh, or, right, or is, is paradise, on the left is um is, is hellfire, behind him is uh, the angel of death. Angel of death behind him, and he's standing on the on the sirah. There is uh, the 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 statement of the of the of this of the scholar. Um, what should we say after prayer? Uh, it's still far than slow and at the kursi. Um, if you have the khulasa with you, it's all there. <laughs> so if you open up the khulasa, you should find it. Um, in the khulasa, there is this part about um, how do you, uh, what do you recite after the prayer. So, so if you have the khulasa that I, that I showed a few weeks ago, just open up to what to recite after the prayer and just follow that one. As usually, as the plus, the plus, the plus, you say Allah Mata Salam, Mika Salam, Wa Ilaika Ya Rasul Salam, right? And then you go at the kursi, then you do three times, um, at the three times, Subhanallah, the just Alhamdulillah, the just Allah Akbar. Then you make your duas, then you do istighfar again, right? And then you uh, do Fatiha, right? To rectify everything. Okay. Um. Then when takbir is also good to niat for our. I don't the question. When takbir also good to niat for our zuriyat and generation to people. No, when you takbir for prayer, you don't niat anything else except for the prayer. Right? When you, when you takbir for your prayer, you don't niat for anything else except for the prayer. What you're talking about here is when I spoke about doing uh, azan for a newborn. <laughs> okay? I, I wasn't speaking about... For prayer, it's strictly prayer. Eh? Strictly solid. 
your niat for solat is solat okay uh, you can't bring in other niats it has because it's 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 fard it's fard right? so you have to be focused on your niat solat right so you're probably confusing it this with uh, what i mentioned of um uh, azan for a newborn hmm. in touch can be in any language any language at all any language in the world <laughs> um can 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 a woman do the yaqama when the husband is a uh, imam yeah sure no problem uh, For men and women, the for takbir is a more different. For women, you bring you you leave you keep your 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 elbows down, but but in the same position, same position. But your elbows are down. For men, they will bring the elbows up. Right, so their 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 armpits are a bit exposed. Right, they bring the elbows. Same thing for the for your sujud. The elbows the elbows are up. Right, but for women, your elbows are to your side, but not to the ground. Right, some women they sujud with the elbows to the ground. Right, Rasul Sam uh, forbade that. He said, don't sujud like a dog. It's like how dogs sujud or dogs sit. They put they they actually rest their elbows on the ground. Don't rest your elbows on the ground. Your elbows are up. Uh, your elbows are up, but they 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 they're tight to your side. Okay, so same thing with the takbir. Uh, your elbows are tight to your side, right? Um, but for the for the men, they they they, they raise their elbows. Okay, raise their elbows. Okay, now, um, right, um. Uh, yes, when you, when you fold your hands over your chest. It is to the left. Right, slightly to the left. Um, repeat again regards to du'a iftitah, meaning that the sunnah of du'a iftitah. Sunnah of du'a iftitah is that you must not have said anything before the du'a iftitah. The sunnah. So the moment you say ta'awuz, if you say a'awuz billahi min ash-shaytan rajim, or you said bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Then the sunnah of du'a iftita is not there anymore. You cannot go back to du'a iftita. It has to be the first thing that you say after your takbir. Okay. Um, uh, what do we do if you have the feeling that you know, oh, never mind, Allah will just forgive us? You are being complacent. And if you have that feeling, I uh, say to yourself, what if what what if Allah wants to hold us to account? Right. Allah can hold to account. Right, so that's why Allah has this His name al 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 adil al adil, right, the one who is just, the one who is fair. If Allah wants to hold us to account, al muntaqim, al muntaqim, right, the one who sees us, right, all Allah's you know very strong names of Allah subhanahu wa taala, they exists, they, all these names exist next to the names of ar rahman, ar rahim, al ghafur. Right, all these names are there, you know. Um, um, uh, uh, so you tell yourself, tell yourself that Allah can hold you to account. He can, and if He does not want to forgive, He can very well do so, right? He can very well do so. Mm. Um, if your environment is not conducive, but you try your very best, then Allah knows lah. Inshallah, Allah knows if you're trying your best. Allah knows if you are playing around. And may Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala grant us. Uh, focus in our prayer. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow for us to um, increase in our prayer every prayer that we pray to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala increase in our in our in our quality of our prayer. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Wa fatiha anna Allah irzuquna al munafi' wa amalan khairan mustaqim. Wa dalala an huda wa yusur bi qabl Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wa ila arwahi mu'alimina mashaykhina. وَذَوِي الْحُقُوقِ عَلَيْنَا وَإِذَا حَضْرَةِ النَّبِي مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَآلِهِ وَصَحْبِهِ وَسَلَّمَ الْفَاتِحَةَ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وانا عاصر سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد ان لا اله الا انت نستغفرك ونتوب اليك صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم الحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليكم